I'm Montana, and I'm still UCSB. Ready to go. So today I'll be presenting to you on N990 to improve millable urethane compounds. So here at RD Abbott, we're all about growing, refining, innovating, solving problems. This is... Ah, okay. Back to the growing. We're all about growing, <laughs> innovating, <laughs> solving problems. And here in the lab, we always want to know what we can do to... I can see Martin's face. Can you turn that off? Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> the camera going. Um, sorry. <laughs> in the lab... <laughs> in the lab, we're always looking to see what we can do to find solutions. We want to make the rubber industry better as a whole. So we wanted to find out how the rubber industry can optimize and improve output while spending less money. So we thought about two ways to do that combination. And the first one... It's a little laggy. It's a little laggy, I apologize. So our solution has to do with a combination of two things. The first is processability, which we believe can be done through the Thermax N990 Thermal Carbon Black, which I'll refer to as N990 for the rest of the presentation, so I don't have to say that the entire time. And the second way is through properties, which we believe can be done through the N330 Furnace Carbon Black. Once again, I'll refer to it as N330, and then Heisel 233. All right, so I would like to explain our solution just a little bit so we know kind of what we're coming at, starting with processability. This has to do with how well or easily the rubber can be processed. It's the subjective part of the process. I want you to think about how well materials mixed, milled, molded, and extruded. You know, it really depends on the person working with it. You know, is it, is it nervy? Is it crepey? Is it baggy, sticky, tacky? Just depends on the rubber. And something very important always to remember that Felipe taught me. Here we go is that the same way we, we have feelings, rubber has So the second half of our solution that we're thinking about is improving physical properties. Now, this is the objective part of the process. It's things we can see the data for. This has to do with abrasion resistance, compression set, gyphrometer, resilience, tensile, and tear, which I'll get into just a little bit later. Um, but it has to do really with what the customer wants. So when I say better physical properties, that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, it has a high duro. It could be, oh, I want a high duro. Um, or it could be want a low duro. All about the customer. Yeah. <laughs> So now that we kind of know what we want to do to attack this issue that we have, we started doing some research. And we actually found a great study done by TSE Industries using the materials we had in mind, like N990. This study said that Thermax N990 is a good extending filler for millophane E34, which can be used at high loading while maintaining reasonable properties and processing. So what did we take away from this? Took away three main things. The first is that millophane E34 it has good physical properties, especially when it comes to abrasion resistance. So remember this abrasion resistance, it's gonna be a theme throughout the entire presentation here. Um, our next takeaway is that N990 increases the durometer. Again, has to do with the spec, depending on what the customer wants. And that even though we're adding all this N990, the tensile remains relatively intact, which is really exciting. Okay, so I know that we're all from different departments. And it's been a while since the rubber course. So I'd kind of like to break it down. I know that a lot of you sometimes know the names of it. You've seen the packaging. But you don't really get to experience seeing all the little pieces come to the final product. So I'm going to break it down just a little bit. I want you to think about it like baking. We start with the base. In this case, we're using methane E34. This is the larger chunk of the material and will pretty much hold everything else in it. Then we add fillers. There's extending and reinforcing. <laughs> The extending filler that we're using is the N990, and this has to do with improving processability. It just makes the material better to work with. It has to do with its morphology. Then we have a reinforcing filler, and this will improve the physical properties. In this case, we're actually comparing two for our study because we want to just see how things are working. We're using N330 and high seal 233. Um, I'm sure you're wondering why I have an asterisk by high seal 233, and that's because we have an extra ingredient with this. We are using a SI69, which is a silane, and it's used to coat the silica because um, it needs to um, coat the it needs to coat the silica so that it can alter the surface chemistry. So that's more responsive to the base. 
So when we're using the N330 with the millethane, they're both carbon-based, so they have good intermolecular um, forces. However, the high cell doesn't have that, so we need to help it out if we want the same level of internal bonding. All right, moving on. Then we use a plasticizer. As I had mentioned before, the N990 makes it harder. It gives it a higher duro. The plasticizer is kind of like your fabric softener, softens it up. And then we have the accelerator, and this actually delays the curing to begin with. And then as soon as the curing starts, it speeds up, so it doesn't take too long. Then we have a cure activator. This just initializes the sulfur cure. And then we have a vulcanizing agent, which um, is actually forming those crosslinks between the molecular chains. <laughs> All right, so I hope at this point you're wondering why we care about this. You know, we don't just do studies in the lab because it's fun. We actually want to know what we can do with things. And in this case, we'd like to show the benefits of N990 at high loadings with a reinforcing filler. And we're suggesting that, that it's better processability and physical properties. This is commercially important <coughs> because the industry will benefit. You know, CanCarb's our supplier, and our sales equal their sales, which equal our sales. So if we can show that their product is improving the product industry as a whole, then we can go out, we can sell more, and then come around and improve everybody's situation. And then for the technical team, you know, when you improve efficiency and performance, everyone likes to come to work when things are working out well. Um, then we can go right back to selling more because that'll improve the performance of the product. So in our study, we are using the Milothate E34, like I said. Now, I didn't really know this base had so many applications. I actually see it in my everyday life. And the first one, which is coming, <laughs> is right here. Now, before I explain what that is, because I definitely didn't know, I want you to think about an extension cord. Think about the life of an extension cord. You know, what's it going to be? Is it going to be stepped on? Is it going to be dragged across the floor? Yes. And it's covered <coughs> by a wire jacket. This right here is a wire jacket. And it's on the external part of the product because it needs to be able to handle the abrasion of the floor. Right back to millethane has a, um, abrasive resistance. Then our next application is right here to shoe sole, specifically the clear part. You know, when we're walking around with our shoes on, we don't want the ground to get to our feet, so we need something to handle the abrasive ground. Still things perfect. And then we have this really cool application <coughs> that Rick taught me about, um, and it's called a plane boot. So I actually have a video to show you what it does. Okay, so. Okay, so they put the millethane. Does it load? They put the millethane on the plane up here when it's flying at high temperatures, low temperatures. This is ice right here, abrasive ice. And they blow it up like a balloon so that it takes the ice off of it, as flying with ice can be very dangerous. And we don't want. We don't want our plane to be damaged. And we especially don't want the thing that's keeping our plane from being damaged to get damaged by this ice. Very nice, which is exactly why we use it. No. So after all of our brainstorming about the capabilities of millethane and N990, we finally came to a hypothesis. And our hypothesis is that high loadings of fillers can be used to improve performance of urethane compounds by improving physical properties abrasion resistance, and even helping economic advantages. So our thought process behind this is that N990, which we already know is a good filler, maintains and improves processability. This makes it easier to work with, more efficient, and much more possible to do. And then, in additional, additionally to that, when you add those um, reinforcing fillers, it adds to the, um, excuse me, when you add the reinforcing fillers, it Improves the physical properties, yes, but it makes it just a little bit harder to work with. So we use the N990 to help with the possibility to make it easier to work with. So now that we know what we're using and what we want to find, we have a test set up. Um, so our control is a 70 duro, which I'd like to give a shout out to Paul. He definitely did the math and got it almost perfect every time. I have a video of him celebrating it. <laughs> I didn't see that video. Mm -hmm. It didn't involve dance. It did not involve his dance video. <laughs> um, it's held constant by the plasticizer at TP95, which I mentioned earlier. And then our variables here are the total filler PHR. You can see there's 80, 100, 120, and there's repeats. And then we're using the two rooming force controls, the 330 and high school 233. The A here stands for the 330, and the B stands for the 233. 
And then the other part here is that we have a N990 ratio. So for example, let's see this is 90. So this means that there's 90% N990 in there and 10% N330 and so on. Then this is basically the 24 runs that we're thinking of doing. But it's important to remember here that this is just a survey. So we're not necessarily looking for a specific set of results right now. We're just gathering data points, seeing the interactions, and finding out where we can go with this. All right, so I've said a lot of numbers, a lot of letters. N990, what is it? So we're using Thermax N990 thermal carbon black. This is carbon black, which is elemental carbon and spherical particles. And it's our extending filler. Remember I mentioned two fillers? Extending filler. This has the largest particle size and the lowest surface area, which means it has the fastest processing time of all the carbon flies. This has to do with its morphology, and it gives us cost reduction without increasing processing time or difficulty. So this is good to work with. It, as I said earlier, enhances that um, durometer, which also enhances tear strength, and then it can be used to help incorporate reinforcing fillers. Um, one distinction I want to make here, this is thermal carbon black. So it's made by the decomposition of natural gas, whereas our the reinforcing filler is a furnace black. Um, and this one is made by the combustion of crude oil and tar. So this is our reinforcing filler. This is N330 furnace carbon black, another carbon black. Um, this is actually a high abrasion furnace black, which is perfect to be used with that millethane. Again, abrasion, we're back at it. This is actually the most widely used high abrasion furnace black, so we didn't just pick some random one. This also improves our physical properties, which has to do with its high surface area to volume ratio. Um, it just gives it more structure, which makes it a better reinforcer. And um, it's known as a fast extrusion furnace black. It's pretty cool. And then our second reinforcing filler here that we're comparing to that previous one is high sil 233. This is fumed silica, which is microscopic droplets of amorphous silica fused into 3D secondary particles that agglomerate into tertiary particles. It is silicon-based, as I had mentioned before, which is why we need that SI69. Um, it's really common, especially in rubber products that need to have good tensile tear and abrasion resistance, very important. And it also works really well with carbon black, so it's just a pretty good one to choose for. And then now that you know our main variables, we did also alter some other things. Um, this, um, they're just not our like, main variables. The first one is millethane, E34. This is millable urethane, and it works really well with N990. Um, this is mainly because it's able to accept that high filler loading, which, like you saw on the test runs, we're putting a lot of filler into it. It needs to be able to hold that. And it also has good properties, mostly abrasion resistance, important. Um, here's a picture of Paul. Um, unfortunately, I'm not mill trained, so he got to do mm -hmm. all the milling and all of the testing. Um, but he did weigh out this for me. So I appreciate that. That's millethane right there. And then the next thing we tweaked a little bit is the TP95. As I mentioned before, this is the plasticizer, has to do with the durometer. And I'm sure you're wondering why, why we need it softer. Well, after adding in all that N990, it's going to be really hard. And we don't want this ridiculously hard material. What if the customer doesn't want that? So it's really a balancing act. We can't put too much of that in there because it's going to bloom, and we don't want that. But if we don't put enough, the material is going to be too hard. And we chose this certain one because it's the most compatible with milk and the base. Okay, so we're finally getting your testing. Um, we made the rubber. Let's see if it works. The first test we did here is tensile. You can see this little shake. Um, so the tensometer. This test is a fundamental test that measures how the rubber does under tension. So you basically just take it. Can you pull it until it snaps? You probably see it when you walk by. I always wonder, oh, what's that in the lab downstairs? Um, so with this one, we just cut out tensile bars. We call them dumbbells because they look like weights. Right, John? <laughs> um, and then we measure the thickness and then put it in the tensometer and stretch it. Our next test, which if you all have been here for the past two years, it's the thingy. Calling <laughs> 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 it the rheometer. Um, so this is the rheometer. It's the rheology. So it's a study of flow. So this, this um, machine studies the flow and deformation of the material under external forces. It measures the shear stress and the strain, and we are testing to ASTM D5289, which is just standard rheology. Um, additionally, we're throwing in um, some Mooney simulations because some people prefer that data. Our next test is the tear one. We are using DICE, and it's basically just to tell us the strength needed to initiate a tear in the material. <clears throat> and then our test after that is 
sorry, they usually shake really well better than that, um, is the Bashor resilience. Um, basically rebound, this is the ratio of energy given up in recovery of deformation. So what we do is we put our compound right here, and pass it, and then we drop a metal ball from a known height. This is basically a ruler, and then we measure it bouncing. This right here moves up and down, and we just put it to the top height of where it bounces. Cool to see how that um, <laughs> ratio of energy is dispersed. And then our final test here is compression set. This is to see how the rubber can return to its original thickness after prolonged compressive um, stress and heat. We did ours for 22 hours at 70 degrees Celsius, and it's just important to see how the rubber's gonna act after it's squished between two parts. I believe Paul has an example of that, so keep listening. And you can see basically how it goes here. So this is the original rubber piece, no stress put on it yet. Here it is compressed. So we put it in a move and it just, you just squeeze it and you heat it up. As you can see, it's nowhere near that line. And then here it is after we take it out and it can recover. I hope you in the back can see this. It doesn't quite hit the line that it was at before. And you can see there's just a difference and we need to know these things. <coughs> Our further testing will not be done at RD Abbott. It will be done at TC Industries, assuming we're coming call back. <laughs> this is the dune abrasion resistance test and we're testing to ASTM D5963. 63 This test literally just measures the abrasion resistance during the performance. And I have a small thing for you, it's very short. So what you do is you put the rubber on this machine and it spins it across a rotating barrel with an abrasion sheet on it. All right, it's gonna start right now. Um, it measures, so here's the rubber. This isn't what we're testing specifically. And then this spins and it shows the um, uniformity of the wear of the abrasion. I apologize, it's in here. All right, so I mentioned that we wanted to do 24 runs, and we currently have data for six, but we are already starting to see some trends. Mm -hmm. um, what we're seeing is that as the N90 ratio decreases, we see an increase in tensile and an increase in compression set. So basically you can see as we add those reinforcing fillers, the tensile is going up, the properties are improving, and then as we're taking out the N990, um, the tensile is actually going up, which is the sorry, excuse me, the compression set's going up, which is actually not good. You don't want it to be too squishy. You need that harder. And then the bottom here, I've mentioned the main trend that we see, which was to be expected, is that the M330 is outperforming the 233. This was to be expected, like I said, because the M330 is the complete carbon compound, um, whereas the 233 is the silica, and we're mixing the silica with the carbon. <laughs> this guy is. But I just, it's been a really great time interning here for the past three years. And you know, I love speaking in front of you no matter how nervous I get. And I just love seeing your faces every day and, you know, enjoying lunches. We do things outside of work, which I know that's really unique to this company. I don't think a lot of companies do that. You know, Geraldine picked out this entire outfit. And, <laughs> It. There's no other way I would rather sign myself.